One of the things that I really actually love about pottery is getting into that state of flow, the creative flow. To me, it's almost like a meditation. I deliberately set up my potter's wheel facing out to my gardens so I could just watch, just every now and then look up and see the gardens, the greenery, the birds and um, I'd have the sun streaming through the stained glass window which was like a rainbow kind of effect on the wall as well which just made it really nice. I'd just lose myself in just throwing on the wheel, thinking about other things. Sometimes I'd listen to audiobooks or music. Sometimes actually I just really like the silence. It wasn't pottery that I started with many years ago. Um, I've just always been a creative type of person and I think I got that from my grandma who passed away last year. Um, but she taught me so many different crafts and when I was 13 I actually had my own jewellery business which didn't do very well but I've just always had something creative going in my life. Um, even through um, nursing I've just always had something on the side. So when I decided to just give it a go 100% just learn that skill so it could be something I can do from home, something that I can really get all my creative juices flowing and put it into pottery, which is something that can be really practical and that people can use and um, that pottery actually lasts forever. Pottery is something that can be around for many, many, many years. I feel like it's something worth doing had seen a Facebook advert previously actually for a potter on the mountain who did classes so I contacted him and he suggested I take up classes down at Benoa at the Gold Coast Potters Association. I remember going to the first class. I'd already bought myself a potter's wheel and I was in the process of buying a kiln and I said to one of the other um, girls at the class Oh, I'm thinking about buying this kiln. Have you got a kiln yet? And she was like, um, no. Why are you buying a kiln now? You must be really keen. And uh, that kind of took me back because I realised, well, actually, I am really keen. <laughs> um, I don't know. I suppose for me, anything that I do, I just do it 100%. Sitting down at the potter's wheel for the first time it was actually on my veranda at home. It was a complete mess. <laughs> I sat down, I'd watched all the YouTube videos and I, so I knew what I was going to do. But I sat down with a lump of clay and it just went flying everywhere. It made a huge mess. And I thought, no, nope, I'm going to do this. There's no way this is going to beat me. So I just kept going and going and going. And even though I was so determined, it actually took at least two months for me to actually centre the clay properly and throw a pot. I did throw a lot of vessels in that two months, but looking back now, they were really heavy bottomed and wonky and not very good. They were beginner's pots. When I realised I got it, like it's almost like a one day you kind of realise, oh, far out, I can throw this, I can, and you can replicate it. It did take a long time and a lot of practice and a lot of clay. I think one of the driving factors for any creative person is to not only create joy and delight in making something, but also seeing someone else have that same joy and delight for seeing it and being able to take it home. So that is actually, for me, one of the driving factors of doing something creative. Just seeing that delight 
and creating that delight in other people. I have always had my own favourite mugs and there's just something about having a mug that's handmade and it just fits in your hand. It's the right weight and it's got something on it that you love. Yeah, it's just something very special about that and I think just the fact that it's handmade also there's nothing else like it. You can't just go and buy that from Kmart. Yeah, I hope that it makes people feel a bit more special in the mornings, <laughs> a bit more loved. Before I even get to the clay, I find the inspiration first. I spend actually a lot of time looking for inspiration and I like finding the inspiration in nature. I love going for bushwalks and looking out for gnomes and things and fairies in the, in the bush. <laughs> I haven't, I've never seen any, but you know, maybe one day. <laughs> I would take that inspiration and then go to the clay. Starting out to make a mug, I weigh my clay out. So get a bag of clay, weigh it all out and then wedge it all up into balls, uh, which is a bit of a long process. So you have to wedge your clay, which is a little bit like kneading dough, but you do it in a certain way so that no air gets into the clay because that will ruin your work. Once I've got my balls all weighed out, then I take it to the pottery wheel and start throwing. I have shelves set up over my pottery wheel. That's actually a process that doesn't take that long, the throwing. You can actually just lose time doing that. Once I've thrown all the mugs, um, that's the time when it can get a little bit tricky because they need to dry to a certain leather hard state before I can trim them. I will have already pulled the handles for the mugs, so they'll be also leather hard at the same time and planning that out takes a bit as well to make sure that they're both at the right leather hardness. After they're all trimmed and the handles are ready to go, I take them back over to another workbench where I start putting it all together. So for this mug, I would start to make all the flowers and leaves and things and I'd put the handle on first and then design the picture there with the flowers and leaves and things. Um, so I'd put them all on and this little crystal holder at the top. So once all of that was done, oh, and I'd stamp the bottom as well. And once that's all done, I'd put it on the shelves to dry. So from there, they have to be completely bone dry before they go into the kiln. Otherwise, there is a risk that they'll explode in the first firing. Once they're all completely bone dry, I go over them with a sponge before they go in and just tidy up any rough edges. Then they go into the kiln where they're bisque fired. That's the first firing and that takes quite a while. We do it slow. So that goes up to about 998 degrees. After that, they can come out. I wash them to get any dust off them. I tidy it up with a bit of sandpaper if I need to. Sometimes it can be a bit, can be a bit rough on the handles or any spots that I've missed. So I wash them and then I let them dry. That takes a bit of time again. So that's another day just to dry. Then I'll go along and put the little red glaze in the heart and then I wax the bottoms. Wax around the bottom prevents the glaze from sticking to the bottom when I dip or when I paint so it gives me a nice line around the bottom and you need that because if you have any glaze on the bottom 
it actually sticks to the kiln shelf and fuses like glass. So the glaze actually becomes glass. So once I've glazed everything, they go back into the kiln and fire again to 1223 degrees. That can be a quicker firing, depending on how much is in the kiln. <laughs> Putting crystals in the mugs, I think I, I did actually see something on Instagram or Pinterest or somewhere where someone had used crystals on her handles. So I was like, oh, okay, that's really awesome. And so I just, took me quite a while to find the right adhesive to use because it needed to be something that would just stay a little bit flexible and be food safe and mold resistant. So I did find something that worked really well, actually. And so I've just been using that ever since. And I love putting the crystals in them and people tend to really like it too. And just as something different, something, uh, because I think there's so many potters, but we all have our own different styles and this is just my style. I sell my pottery both online and I do the local markets as well, just once a month. I always come and check out what she's been crafting and follow all her pages on social media. She's just got a really um, beautiful and unique way of creating, so yeah, I love it. The mug I have from Mel is actually, I use it just for cacao ceremonies, um, so it's my very special spiritual mug. <laughs> um, and yeah, it just feels really special and magical drinking out of it. It's beautiful, it's got all mermaid vibes with crystals on it, it feels really special. Hey Mel, just wanted to say thank you for sharing your magic with the world, we all appreciate it. When I'm at the markets and people see my work for the first time, it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Sometimes I just want to hide when they pick something up and just go nuts about it. Um, but it's really nice to see that response and that, that actually is that delight that I want to see from people when they pick something up and they just love it. That makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> it's really nice when people appreciate it. For all my customers who have bought my pots um, or followed me on Instagram or Facebook and have supported me through this journey, I would really love to say thank you. I, you don't know what it actually means to have that support and appreciation from, from you all. Yeah. I'm Melanie from Earth Love Ceramics. I'm a potter. I live on Tambourine Mountain. And if you'd like to reach out to me, contact me via Instagram or Facebook, or you can check out my website, earthloveceramics.com. <laughs> Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> Maybe there is a bit of magic out there that we can't see.